Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have a super fun card. This is the inspiration for the card, but there's going to be quite a bit of a twist happening today. But we are gonna do some wet, wet, washy watercolor flowers and create a 3D embellishment uh, that's gonna sit on top of this card with a new tool from My Sweet Petunia called the Cut Align. And I am super excited about this. I wanna talk a lot about dropping watercolor in, and we're gonna talk a lot about the wet in wet, washy watercolor effect. So let's get started. Here are the supplies that I am using for today's tutorial. I have a piece of watercolor paper cut from my favorite watercolor paper on the planet, the B Watercolor, B Paper Company, the watercolor paper. And I know I show this in every video, but it is my favorite. And I'll have all the links down below as well, so you can take a peek. I have my favorite Gina K Designs um, cardstock, love, love, love. And this is the Pure Luxury Cardstock Wild Lilac cut. Um, to the A2 size layer. And I also have a piece of the white Gina K um, 100 pound card stock cut for my card base. I've got some amalgam inks here and I also have my Gina K Designs Wild Dandelion, Grass Green and Lovely Lavender inks here. I also have some liquid watercolors here. I have two um, from Hero Arts, a mulled wine and teal. And I have three sets, I have three liquid watercolors here from um, Prima, from their Art Philosophy line. And I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna use yet because I wanna talk a little bit about color mixing. So we'll get there. I've got some water. I have a paintbrush here, the silver black velvet, one of my favorites. And I've got my tidy towel. And I love this tidy towel. It is so well loved. Um, and it really does help me keep my surface clean. I've got some scissors here. I've got an X-Acto knife, some Connect glue, and some of the uh, Gina K for ThermoWeb tacky tape. So I've just some adhesive tools. And I also have this tool from My Sweet Petunia called the cut line And folks, I am an old school graphic designer. So these tools mean a lot to me because I um, became a graphic designer before there were computers and I did everything by hand. So this tool is really, really cool for me because I do love to hand cut my own sentiments and I'm gonna show you how. So I'm gonna be using a couple of the stamps from my Hugs and Wildflowers stamp set from Gina K. And we're just gonna have some fun with this. This is a really simple card that's big on a lots of watercolor techniques, but simple, wet and wet. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got the big bloom from the Hugs and Wildflowers set, and I'm going to create um, just kind of a falling flower look going across the center of this panel of wa uh, watercolor paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it up with some amalgam ink because that ink is not gonna run when I start to add the water and the watercolor. So in order to get my positioning, I'm gonna start in the center and just kind of eyeball it here and just give it a little turn to the left to get a little bit of wonk going, get a little wonky look. So this is setting my piece for where I'm going to put my other images. And yes, I'm gonna stamp the images off the edge just to create a little bit of visual interest going through the center of that card. So you could use your Misty for this, but that Amalgam Ink is super strong. It's gonna work really well on your watercolor paper. Okay, so I'm gonna swatch out these colors, these liquid watercolors. Now, I love me some liquid watercolors and you've seen me use lots of different ones in my videos um, in the past. And so I just love using different brands of watercolors, liquid watercolors. So I've got the Hero Arts brand here and I'm swatching these colors out so that we can get a good look-see. And I recommend this when you're working on your projects, even with your dye inks, just kind of swatch them out on a piece of paper so that you can see what colors you're working with um, with your project. So I've got these two, I've got this 
this yellow and I've got this purple here and I've got this pink that's from the Prima line and you can see me swatch them out here and they're just absolutely gorgeous colors but my goal here is I'm trying to match a color to go with the wild lilac pure luxury cardstock now I could use the dye ink and I could use a ring anchor but I really want to get a contrasting color that will go with that wild lilac cardstock. So I've got the teal and the mulled wine here from Hero Arts, and I'm mixing the two colors together over here on the right. And you can see that that is giving me a darker value, a richer, more saturated um, purple tone. A violet tone than I'm going that I'm getting with this other um, watercolor that's just straight up. So that's one of the beautiful things about working with the colors that you have. A lot of times you can mix your colors together and you can create different values, um, different hues of color. So I'm loving that color, the teal and the mold wine mixed together. So I'm going to go ahead and move on and use those colors now. You do not need to put so much of the color on your plate. I've got a little porcelain plate here, or you can do it on your craft mat. I kind of squeezed out the whole dropper, and really I needed probably two drops here. So that porcelain plate's going to end up sitting on my desk, and I'll end up using it for um, another project. So I've got this pink here, and I think I'm going to just go ahead and drop a little drop of that on my porcelain plate as well. And just, I might use it, I might not use it, but I'm just going to go ahead and you put it on there just in case. Okay, so there's my swatch, and I'm really, really digging that um, that contrast with the wild lilac um, color just by mixing those two colors together, the mulled wine and the teal color together to get that beautiful new violet hue. Okay, so now we're going to get into the thick of it, and this is a wet. On wet watercolor technique so what I'm doing is I'm taking my brush I'm dipping it into my water clean water by the way absolutely clean water which is unusual for me to have it so clean so I'm just dipping it in and I'm saturating the whole area here across the center and just kind of following the flow of the falling flowers and I'm adding and lots of color in there so you can see me, I'm dropping the perp, the pink from the, uh, the liquid watercolor into the water. And you can see how it dispersed. It just dispersed and like flowed with the water. So that's the wet and wet technique. And super, super easy to add watercolor effects to your paper crafting projects without doing a lot of coloring in the lines and just kind of giving it the flow. Just mixed up those two colors, the mulled wine and the teal. And you can see me dropping it in here. And I'm just dropping it in the center and letting the water do its thing. Watercolor goes with the flow. It's going to go wherever the water is. So you're gonna see me dip um, just kind of move my piece my paper around and I'm kind of coaxing these colors to kind of bleed together now you could take a mister and mist on top of this and get those colors to kind of move and bleed together so now I'm getting a lot closer in contrast to that wild lilac card base that I really wanted my whole goal with mixing those colors together so you can see me moving them around and see how the watercolors only going to flow where the water is. Now, I've got quite a bit here, and it looks like a wee bit of a little bit of a hot mess around the edges. And I really want to feather that out a little bit and just get a little bit more of an organic feel. So I'm just taking a little bit of a paper towel and using it as like a wick, and it's going to wick up the outer edges of the water and just kind of help me bring back some of that organic texture around the edges so that we can get that kind of match that falling flower flow that I've got going on with the watercolor. One thing that I've mentioned before in my videos is that 
watercolor. It's very super duper vibrant right now because it's super, super wet. Now, when it dries, it is going to fade back and a couple of values. So it's going to get lighter. So with this wet on wet technique and dropping in your watercolor into the water, it's okay to go ahead and drop in quite a bit to where it almost feels a little bit uncomfortable to you, where it's like, holy smokes, I got big blobs of color here. What am I going to do? Just take a breath and relax because it's going to fade back a bit when it dries in value. And the Hero Arts watercolors are pigment based, so they're not dye based. So they're they are very much like an artist grade watercolor in that they are going to be very, very bright and they're not going to fade back as much as a dye would. So look at that color and look at that mix. So mixing that mauled wine and the teal together also gave me a little bit of granulation. And when it works with the um, texture of the paper, it's just glorious. Okay. I got really excited. So now I'm going to go ahead and create some of the embellishments. I've got some grass green here and I've pulled the, um, the leaf elements and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that out twice. And I'm stamping it on a piece of watercolor paper, or you could have it on any kind of piece of white paper that you have there. I just had a scratch piece of watercolor paper. So I'm just going ahead, going ahead and using that. And then I'm going to go ahead and ink it up again ink up just one of the leaf elements, the medium sized leaf with the grass green. And I'm gonna pull the dies that the companion dies for the Hugs and Wildflowers set and just go ahead and run them through my die cutter. And I'm using the Platinum Six and I love that die cutter. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I'm gonna create the 3D embellishment and using and cut the embellishment out straight. So I've pulled the and happy thoughts sentiment from the hugs and wildflowers set. And I inked it up with the amalgam. And then I just wiped off the ink off the word and. So it left me with happy thoughts. And then I grabbed the sending you um, sentiment from the set. And I'm going to stamp that right on top of the happy thoughts. And, you know, we just love the clear stamps because it helps us get, get those sentiments really close together. Now, I have been super challenged in the past with cutting out these sentiments on a paper trimmer. I always wonk it up. This tool from My Sweet Petunia called the Cut Align, there's two tools in the box. There's one for a 12 by 12 sheet, and there's this a smaller one that's, um, for card making and I'm just loving it. So it's got all of these lines on it that are perfect for lining things up. And I'm going to show you how um, I'm going to line this up. And I've taped down my sentiment because I didn't want it to shift because a lot of, I've been using an exacto for many, many years, almost a really long time. And um, I just didn't want my paper to shift. So I'm lining up the bottom happy thoughts with the, the lines that are on the cutter line. And then it's got this, this channel in the middle of the ruler where you can cut the straight line. So even if you've stamped your sentiment wonky, right? Wonky, like super wonky on your paper, you can realign things with these lines. So again, I'm taking the lines here from the cutter line and I'm lining them up with the top of the sentiment. And then I'm going to go ahead into the channel and cut again. And I've got this little glass mat here that's kind of just helping that um, X-Acto knife glide across. And I've got this perfect sentiment cut super straight. And I'm very comfortable with an X-Acto knife or any kind of knife. You can use any kind of X-Acto um, or craft knife to run it through this line. And the other thing about the cut a line I want to mention is that 
the X-Acto knife stays in the channel so it doesn't jump and you have no like risk of cutting yourself. It stays in the channel and it really helps you guide the blade for a straight cut. Love. Okay, so now this next thing I cannot take credit for. I saw Karen Hightower share this in a video and I'll link that up for you to see, but she uses this tool to create a banner like for your sentiment. And I was like, holy smokes, that's brilliant. I love that. I'm always like creating little banners or clipping out the edges. But this, by putting your paper in the channel and just bending the paper to the left and then to the right, you're able to create a little bit of extra dimension and a 3D sentiment embellishment. And I was like, this is just so brilliant and smart and fun and easy to do. You're already cutting your sentiment. So you can just trim off these edges and then just cut in a little tiny flag to the edges. And then you've got this really super fun 3D embellishment. Thank you, Karen, for such a brilliant idea. Karen is on the design team for Gina K, and I absolutely love her. I love how we all can share and have wonderful ideas to give to each other. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and move on. And now I'm just adding over stamping into the watercolor to add some more layers of stamping and add some more texture and dimension. So when we're adding over stamping these images and adding layers on top, it creates that illusion of 3D. So you have things that come to the front of the card and things that come to the back, but you are working on one layer. And look at that 3D embellishment that's just gonna sit on top there. It's not gonna add a ton of weight, but it is gonna add some really, really fun, um, 3D texture to the whole card. Okay, so I'm just kind of positioning some things here and just seeing where I'm going to want to put the other leaf embellishments to kind of finish off this card. The watercolor is really the star of the show. And of course, the stamps, as always, is are the star of the show. So I'm just adding a little bit of connect glue to the back of that 3D embellishment and popping it right on there. And it just is the cutest way to add a little embellishment with your sentiment. Usually I'm stamping my sentiments right onto the card, but this is super fun and I love that I could use that tool, the cut a line tool to cut my sentiments straight um, because I am super challenged with trying to get it done with a paper cutter. And because I just love um, a good tool, it's just such a valuable thing for me. So um, yes. All right, so I'm just kind of moving things around and figuring out where I want it to go just to create some texture and dimension here. And ah, oh, look at that color. Holy smokes. So I just went ahead and glued all of my card bases together and I am really digging this card. So I've got that wild dandelion going on in the top and the bottom. And I really want to draw a little bit of that yellow color to the center of this flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of that liquid watercolor in yellow um, from the Prima set, and the color I believe is called Taxi. So I'm just gonna put a little drop down here on my craft mat. And you know, this is kind of like going rogue and doing a little bit of an experiment. You could use some gems, you could use Lots of different things here, but I'm just going to drop a little bit of yellow watercolor, liquid watercolor, on top of this center floral just to draw some of that yellow into the center. One of the other things I want to mention about yellow when you're using it in your watercolor projects is I often use yellow at the end on top of pinks and purples because it jacks up the vibrancy and the luminosity of the color. Ah! A little bit of geekery there. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed today's card tutorial. Thanks so much for joining me. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.